Are you tired of signing players who aren't meeting your expectations on FIFA 23 career mode? Do you wish you could make better decisions when it comes to building the ultimate squad? Look no further because in this video we're going to be discussing some top tips to always sign the right player for your team. From researching a player's track record to considering how they'd fit in with your style of play, we'll cover all of the key factors to consider when making a signing. And if you follow these tips, you can ensure that you're making an informed and successful transfer decision every time for FIFA 23 career mode. So let's get started. A lot of these tips will be assuming you've fully scouted the player, so make sure you do that before even trying to sign someone, because that is by far the most important part of signing a player. From fully scouting a player, you'll be able to see some pretty important information. The first thing I always look at every single signing is to see if they have the injury prone trait. A couple of the best talents in the world at the minute have this trait. For example, Ansu Fati at Barcelona's had it for a couple of seasons, and Yusuf Makoko was given it this season at Borussia Dortmund. These two players are players that will cost you about 50 to 100 million pounds depending on how far you are in in your career mode. So if you're buying a player for this much money, you don't want someone who's going to be constantly injured, not being able to play, and you're just going to be giving them big wages to sit on their bums on the bench. Of course, the fact that they are injury prone doesn't mean they always will be. They can still do full seasons, and if you do judge that the risk is worth it, the next thing I think you should look at is the player's physical abilities and their fitness level. So of course, fitness level isn't really related to being injury prone. You can be super fit, be able to run 50 kilometers a day, but still have really dodgy hamstrings. So if you're looking at physical abilities, that kind of depends on what league you're in. If you're in the MLS, you need players with probably about 70 pace. If you're in the Premier League, I'd probably go up to 80 to 85 in basically every single position except for centre-back and goalkeeper. The physical ability is a huge part of FIFA. I'm sure everybody knows this. A fast player in any league is always going to dominate. So have a look. Make sure the player has got enough pace. Or if they're older, make sure their technical ability is good enough to compensate for this pace. For example, you can have a centre-back with really, really high positioning but low pace, they can still be effective. But if it's a young player with low pace and they still haven't learned how to position themselves well, I would at this point then avoid signing the player. This is also the stage where I'd start to look at work rates. For example, in my midfield, I like to always have someone with high defensive work rates and two players with high attacking and high defensive work rates. This means that two of these players need to have really high stamina. If they've already got these work rates, they're going to be getting up and down the pitch the entire match. The defensive player doesn't need quite as much fitness, so I wouldn't really incorporate that much in this area. So depending on the position you're looking for, make sure they'll fit in with how you like to play. If you're playing gegenpress like Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool, constantly pressing, every position will need loads of stamina. If you're playing something a bit more possession based, maybe you can avoid this stage and just go straight into looking at their technical abilities, which in my opinion is the third thing you should look at before signing every single player. We've all seen players out there who have got really good physicals but absolutely terrible stats in their technical area. For example, you might be interested in signing someone like Daniel Pedense who plays for Wolverhampton Wanderers. This guy has all the stats to be a really good winger and potentially even a really good striker. He's got 86 dribbling, he's got 94 acceleration, 92 agility and 82 ball control. You're thinking maybe this guy could be the guy through the middle and he'll dominate the Premier League. And then you look at his stats and you realise he's got 66 finishing. So he's going to constantly get through on one-on-ones and then he's going to either be muscled off the ball because of his 30 strength or he's not going to be able to finish because he's only got 66 finishing. Another player who looks ridiculously good for their position is Konstantinos Mavropanos. So this guy's 78 overall, he's got 88 sprint speed, he's got 90 strength, 82 jumping and he's 6 foot 4. So this guy seems like he could be a really really good defender. And then you see that he only has 70 defensive awareness, so his positioning is absolutely awful. You probably wouldn't have got this far if you're already following the tips because he is injury prone as well, but with 88 sprint speed and 85 standing tackle, this guy goes from being an awesome centre back who could become really good in the future to being someone that probably won't actually ever be that useful if you do sign them on your career mode save. So by now you should have a list of players who aren't injury prone so they're going to be able to play every single game you want them to. They're going to be physically fit and ready for the league with the right amount of pace and you know they've got enough technique to finish off chances or defend from opposition attacks and you're going to be able to use them actually in match rather than just looking at them in your career mode menus. So now it's time to look at the financial information about the players. What are the things you can sort of judge to decide if you want to sign this player over a different player who's maybe got very similar stats but different expectations when it comes to wages and transfer value? 
So some leagues on the FIFA are really underrated when it comes to how much players are worth. I know one for example is Belgium, they have a lot of really highly rated players and they've been given really low values. For example, Mario Stroikens at Anderlecht. This guy is 17 years old with 83 potential and he plays as a striker. He's got really good stats to be honest for someone of this ability at this age. So which one of the two would you go for? Would you go for Mario or would you go for Cole Palmer? Well of course the good option would be probably trying to go for Mario because his wage is 1000 euros per week whereas Cole Palmer is getting that 20,000 euros per week. You're getting such a better deal with Mario because you're going to be saving around a million pounds a year just by signing him instead of going for Cole Palmer despite like I said them having very very similar stats, attributes and potential. One thing we've just looked at here is potential and age which are again two very important things every time you're signing a player. A lot of the older players on FIFA have really important stats that you can't find on some of the younger ones. For example, Composure is a stat that just goes up every single season as you progress throughout your career mode. High Composure means your players will perform better when under pressure from either pressing players or in a high pressure situation like a penalty shootout, so you do need some of these players in your squad. Don't do what a lot of people do where they just go for very, very young players. So make sure you're signing at least one or two older players for every three or four younger players in your squad. Of course the younger players will eventually become the older players, but all you'll be doing then is waiting around for a few seasons in your career mode when you probably could be having a little bit more success if you had two or three older players in your first starting 11. You can see this all around the world in real football, Luka Modric and Tony Cruz at Real Madrid, you've got people like Jordan Henderson, James Milner at Liverpool, every single team has a few of these older heads who have been there, done that and are just really good. So when you're making every single signing, make sure you are balancing the age in your squad. If you've got 11 really young players in your squad already, you want to sign a new player and you think you can either go for someone who's about 28 years old or someone who's 18 year old it might not always be the best decision to go for the 18 year old. You might need someone who can take that penalty, win the game and therefore win you a trophy. Some of these high mental abilities are really really rare on younger players. For example, under the age of 23, only three different players have more than 85 composure. They're Pedri, Erling Haaland and Kylian Mbappe. You can see it's such a big important stat and it's so so rare. So have a look at getting a couple of older players into your squad and I think you'll do a little bit better and that'll help you to always sign the right player. So right now you'll have a player that you know will always be fit, you'll know they're quick enough to keep up with the league while also being good enough on the ball at attacking or defending, you'll know they're the right age and you're buying them for the right fee. If you've got all five of these things I would say you should go and sign this player because he's most likely to be the exact player that you need for that position. Make sure you've got a gap for him if they're younger, make sure you can give them game time if they're older, make sure you've got someone younger who can then develop and become better than them. But overall, I think you're in a pretty good situation where you're going to improve every single season. If you've got any tips you like for signing players, leave them in the comments below. And if you're going to sign anyone, let me know who you signed by using these tips and let me know if they were the right person for you. But thank you all for watching. I love career mode, hopefully you all do. Subscribe if you like career mode too. And I'll see you soon. Cheers and goodbye.